What's poppin' T-Squad? It's your girl Keisha and I'm here with this week's All T All Shay Baddies West Season 3 Episode 4 Review. I drop videos Monday through Sunday. Everything that I say is for entertainment purposes only and not to be taken seriously or literally. Everything is alleged when it comes to gossip. <laughs> if that works for you, then let's get into tonight's review. The episode begins with Tommy and Natalie taking a private jet to their next location and the girls having to ride the bus three hours to the next house that they're going to be staying in. And Natalie keeps on going on and on about how the girls are going to be mad that they rode in a PJ. And Tommy was like, who gives a F? <laughs> like, I don't like how they try and act like you're supposed to be on the same level. You giving them an opportunity. And I agree with Tommy. Like she is the creator and executive producer of this show. She deserves to, you know, use whatever transportation she wants she's not on the same level as them but then again she acts like she is on the same level as them as far as her maturity level you know what I'm saying so I feel like moving forward if Natalie really wants to separate herself from the pack that she does need to start carrying herself like an EP and like a creator like if you're going to be the shiny of the show then be the shiny of the show you shouldn't ride in the same car as them you should only pop up when necessary I don't even think that she's needed on the show to be honest with you at this point I feel like the girls should be able to go to these cities and do what they need to do on their own without having her there as a chaperone we all know the premise of the show we already know what's supposed to go down it ain't nothing but arguing and fighting so I feel like Natalie should take the role like she took on Bad Boys where, you know, she popped in and out here and there. But other than that, she wasn't there on an everyday basis. Natalie then goes on to say that, you know, Krishan was like, I'm the star of the show. Y'all want to get clout off me. Every scene going to be about me. And Tommy was like, what? <laughs> she was like, just humble down. Like they'll get their little moment and then it'll crash and burn. And you do have to be careful with getting the big head and thinking that you're like you are the star of the show because really what star of what show are you? You're on a show based upon girls being ratchet and fighting and cussing and arguing and stripping and booty popping like so really what are you a star of like anybody can do what you're doing love like so I do agree that Krishan needs to like simmer down because you haven't really done anything of substance that will give you longevity in this uh reality arena you know what I'm saying you know once they use you up they'll spit you out the girls are on the bus they're drinking and dancing and Feeling all on each other. Lo and Krishan is touching each other's boobies. And Krishan is touching her boobies. Trying to see how soft they are. Because Lo has implants. And I'm like wow. Haven't you both come a long way. <laughs> like literally two days ago. This girl had boom bopped you in the forehead. And had three fruity pebbles on your forehead. And now y'all over here touching on each other's tie ties. Like. Mm, look at how the world turns so somebody asks Razor about her tattoos because you know she is tatted up literally from I think her neck down and so she gets to talking about her tattoos but mind you it's obvious that she is drunk boots okay so Scotty is begging and begging and begging to see her tattoos because in her confessional she says that she has 11 herself and she's really interested in tattoos and you know the mean is behind them and so she's like very whiny and begging Razor to see her tattoos and uh Razor was like you seen them last night and Scotty was like no I didn't I want to see the tats let me see the tats let me see your tattoos and when they were talking right here was it just me or was it given very much I felt like they might have fooled around or something the night before it was really weird the way this whole thing popped off but the first initial thing that I got when she said you saw him last night and then the way that she was like begging and stuff it was giving me like they might have hooked up or something like it was something very weird going on there so razor then ends up taking off her jogging pants and at this point she's just in her shirt and her underwear 
and she's showing the girls her tattoo and scotty is like um uh, holding on to her waist and her butt like let me see let me see and like positioning her and turning her around so she can see certain tattoos and stuff and like grabbing her and turning her around and stuff and it wasn't anything you know actual you know i can't say the word because you know youtube is just ugh, right now but anywho but she was like you know how you doing somebody here like turn your head and you know like that type of situation and so razor was like uh scotty i don't like that you kept pulling my you know stuff down you also said that you wasn't gay so if you want to see some you know punani you need to pay me and scotty was like huh like i like tattoos like i was trying to see your tattoos and here go biggie you know scotty wasn't the only one pulling your pants down you know we all was doing it uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Like, I just want that girl to cough and clear her throat. Like, what is going on? You can't tell me that girl ain't got several strap-ons st <laughs> stuffed down her throat. In Razor's confessional, she says that some of the tattoos that you can't see mean something to me. I don't want you touching me. Like, period. Like, she was just like, I don't want you nobody know, touching on me. And that's understandable. But love... Uh, y'all all was touching on each other. You at some point was laid up with your legs kicked in the air. Like all of y'all was wilding out and having a good time. I really feel like this is a situation where she got drunk, was triggered in some type of way with something that happened to her in her past. And it didn't have anything to do with Scotty. Scotty was just the person that ended up taking the brunt of this whole entire situation. But I think that this was nothing but trauma and alcohol honestly truly so um razor then starts accusing scotty of pulling down her pants and you know she's screaming don't touch me don't touch me because that's violating that's violating and she accuses her of touching her punani and scotty was like girl i was not touching on you like i was just trying to see your tattoos so at some point they're in like the hallway of the the bus and they arguing back and forth razor is irate drunk and just tripping and she runs up and hits scotty in the face and they you know have a little quick tata -ta. <laughs> nobody won because they really couldn't even get to each other for real at this point the security guy is standing in between them Krishan though in her confession was like you know she wasn't touching you more any more than I was like it had to be about a dude like that's the only thing that Krishan could relate to for her to get you know that irate and upset about something so Scotty was like you know who holding you back so come here so come here so they steady arguing Razor run up on her again and try to hit her while screaming run up run up but I mean this girl is screaming at the top of her lungs and I'm like oh my god girl you ain't gonna be able to talk to more because I know your throat is on fire so Sky in her confession was like I don't know who had the real issue but one of them is lying um well, the person that obviously has the issue is Razor. Like I said, I think that the girl was triggered and drunk and just acting a monkey. But something I think else happened between them. I really honestly think that they got touchy-feely the night before. So, something weird is going on with them. I don't know if they hooked up or what. So at this point, uh, we see Natalie and Tommy get to the house and natalie starts doing her you know witchery with starting stuff she knows exactly what she's doing when she does stuff like this don't tell the girls that we rode in a pj because they're gonna be mad don't post it don't post nothing because i don't want them to know that we rode on a pj and tommy was like f them hoes <laughs> you're an executive producer and i'm a producer this is how we move like it is what it is and you know once you tell somebody not to say something so many times that they're going to say it and this was natalie's way of trying to start an issue with getting the girls riled up, getting more drama started, having the girls be mad because they rode in a private jet and they was on a bus. But honestly, it didn't even work. Like this one didn't work at all. Like 
she failed with trying to create drama. So the girls arrive at the house. And as soon as they walk in, of course, Tommy lets them know that they rode there on a private jet. Now, the only person that even cared enough to even have any type of feelings about it was Biggie. She was like, Yo, oh my God, y'all rode on a private jet and y'all had me riding on these bus with these girls. What, what is going on? I, I, I don't like that. Somebody gonna have to give me a massage because I, I don't like that I was on that bus and they was riding on the PJ. <laughs> Girls get to mention it to Natalie and Tommy how stuff went down on the bus. And Biggie was like, you know, they had a little issue. <laughs> so Razor was like, Scotty, B, you're nothing to me. I don't even want to speak to you no more. Run up, run up or whatever. I really feel like they hooked up. I really honestly do. So Scotty was like, you run up. And so Razor runs up and... She's, you know, trying to fight this girl, but Scotty honestly did get the best of her. Like Scotty has said, she's not a fighter. That's not what she's here for, but she got the best of the little girl, you know, cause Razor was so annoying, so annoying this episode. Like I was so disappointed in her for whatever reason. I don't really know why, but I was. Security breaks it up, but Razor is steady screaming like she is a deranged problem child. <laughs> Rolly and her confession was like, I don't think Scotty touched her, you know, Punani. Scotty isn't that type of girl. I think Razor was tripping out and needed to put the drink down. And I 100% agree with Rolly. So, um, like I said, they fought. They went heads up and everything. Scotty won. And Razor was like, you mad because I took your best friend? You mad because I took your best friend? And she's talking about Natalie. And it was that was weird to me, too. I'm like, is that the issue? Like, I don't know what's going on at this point. So Rolly was like, okay, y'all got y'all issue off. Let's go. Like, ain't nobody got time for this. So everybody trying to get ready to go to the club that night because, you know, they got a, you know, event they hosting and performing and stuff. And if they don't arrive, they don't get paid. So Razor is outside yelling like a donkey, just embarrassing at this point. I don't know why they just didn't put a muzzle on her and give her some Benadryl so she can go to bed, child. So at some point she walks back into the house and Biggie is trying to talk to her and calm her down. Biggie like, Razor, 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 let me just talk to you. Let me just talk to you. And Razor was like, I don't want to talk. Can you please not touch me? Because she was like trying to, you know, touch her hand to calm her down. And Biggie was like, okay, I won't touch you. But listen to me. We spent a lot of money to get, you know, stuff together. Look at me, baby. Look at me, baby. You're so beautiful. You are so beautiful. <laughs> and I'm like, why do you talk to other women like you are a PIMP? Like, oh my God, you are a girl. You don't have to tell her she's so beautiful and calling her baby. Like you even move and talk like a dude. Like if that's who you are, then okay. But it's just confusing me because your voice gives hulk hogan and your body is in your makeup and your clothes is giving me shenanay like i just don't understand what is going on with biggie like she wants to be girly she wants to be like a fenty model but then her voice is giving very much mob deep like i don't even understand what is going on if anybody she should have been accusing of um assaulting her <laughs> it should have been biggie <laughs> we're coming on to her while trying to get her to calm down so razor was like ain't that your friend ain't that your friend then bring her down here get her down here so we then see scotty and sky in natalie's room letting her know the full story of what happened on the bus they both are telling Natalie like the girl is tripping like it wasn't even what she's trying to say. Scotty is profusely saying that she didn't touch her inappropriately or anything like that. But then we go back to the kitchen and Lo has come down now trying to get Razor to calm down. And Lo was like, you see, she don't want to fight you no more. And Razor's like, I want somebody to go find her. I'm violated. I'm violated. So... Tommy didn't come and try to talk to her. And she was like, you know, we got to perform and you're going to ruin it for all of us. Like, really, girl? So Tommy then tells Scotty that just let her, you know, get her issue off. Y'all, you know, bang it out one more time. And after that, it is what it is. So um, Lo tries to talk to her one-on-one -on -one again. That don't work. 
Raise is steady saying she know what she did. She know what she did, girl. You don't even know where you are right, right about now. You so irate and drunk. And come to find out when they was on the bus, they drank two bottles of Casamigos. And I was like, oh, that's why she crazy. <laughs> now it all makes sense. She can't A, handle her liquor and she's an angry drunk. Okay. So, um... Tommy was like, okay, we're going to go downstairs. We're going to have a conversation or whatever. And she tells Razor, don't be having on that Chucky face either because you know you look like Chucky Bride. <laughs> I'm like, how you going to try to calm this girl down and then join on her at the same time? Jesus. So all the girls go into the foyer to meet up and have a conversation so they can try to get on some type of one accord so they can go out to the club that night. Raise is still on one child. She has not calmed down at all. She is still very much inebriated. Scotty is calm. However, Scotty don't want to fight that girl again. But at this point, if she got to, she'll do what she got to do. And Tommy keep on reminding Razor that she got something to lose at this point. But the girl ain't trying to listen. She want to go again. And that's really where things got left off with this episode on a cliffhanger. And I guess we'll resume next week. But honestly, at this point, y'all know the girl is drunk. Y'all should have just literally put her to sleep. Locked her in a room by herself and put her to sleep. She just wouldn't have been able to go out because she's acting psycho okay and it's obvious that it's because of the alcohol and now we know moving forward she can't drink like that because we're going to get moments like this but they're on a reality show where they promote moments like this so I guess they'll continue to get her liquored up so she can act a banshee fool and that was pretty much the episode overall I'll give this week's episode a B minus because Razor was just getting on my last everlasting nerves. Like I was really liking her, but when she get to get a little saucy, honey, oh Lord, she is irritating. Irritate my soul, irritate my soul, irritate my soul, and I'm gonna tell everybody. <laughs> yeah, she was annoying. Y'all let me know down below in the comment section what y'all thought about tonight's episode. Make sure to thumbs up this video, like, and subscribe, and hit that mother... I was going to say mother F. Y'all hit that notification bell button. I love y'all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.